Breath retention is called pranayama. <laughs> Correct? Right? Yes. So what happens when we're inhaling and exhaling? That's part of pranayama as well, isn't it? Not really. That's just a breathing process. So everything happens in the Correct. He explains it in pranayama process. We will probably reach there. Not sure right now. Probably we can get up to that point. So for him, just inhale exhale, or just creating a sound of Brahmari, or just creating a sound of Ujjayi is not really a pranayama. The text that has not pranayama, the pranayama word and the pranayama techniques have been presented in a very systematic manner for the first time in this textbook of Atha Yoga Pradipika by Swami Svatmarana. He calls pranayama as holding of breath. Then next, Chitram Mudra Khyam Karanam Tatha Mudras And then Nadana Sandhan The meditation on subtle sounds is the Anukrama sequence of Hatha Hatha is the sequence Next verse can I understand? Yes. What is the definition of mudra? Mudra. Mudra is a, is a uh, gesture yeah. which has the power to affect your mind. So it's a gesture that changes the state of your mind. When you do dhyana mudra, what does it do? It makes your mind have a calm, relaxed. There are mudras in Indian dance, classical dance. There are some mudras, if you do that, you will start feeling angry. There are some mudras that make you really, really, really happy. There are mudras that can make you really excited. There are mudras that can make you feel in different emotions. Here, the mudras that are used in Hatha Yoga, they are talking more about a particular flow of your mental energy in a particular direction. So they channelize and control the flow of your mental energy. Mental energy, you can call it as emotional energy also or a thought process, channelizing of thought process. I'll tell you one simple mudra that you, you have been practicing. Viparit Karani Mudra. Viparit Karani Mudra also alters your state of mind. <laughs> and how do they do this? How do these mudras actually affect the state of mind? By ch changing the flow of prana. So mudras basically alter, affect, modify, change pranic energy flow. With certain mudras, you can concentrate prana in certain areas of the body. With mudras, you can stop prana from going to certain areas of the body and mind. Because prana controls body, prana controls mind. You all have this logic, right? What is prana? Life force. If you physically work, you feel tired. But if you mentally work, do you feel tired? Yes. Because in both cases, physically and mentally, you are spending same energy, which is in yoga called prana. Don't say prana. Prana is not a correct Sanskrit pronunciation. Correct Sanskrit pronunciation is prana. Can we say that all asanas are mudras? No. No. All asanas are not mudras. Good. Sarvangasana shoulder stand is not a mudra. But Vipri Karni is a mudra. Why? Because it affects your pranic energy flow in a stronger way than Saramangasana can do. But to some extent what you said is correct. Because to some extent asanas do affect prana. But it's like 5% and mudras is suddenly like 50-60%. It's like a big way, big change. Atma Dhyayi, the one who contemplates <laughs> on this, like the inner introverted attitude. 
मिताहारी लेस डाइट सिद्धासन प्रैक्टिस ट्वेल्व इयर्स एंड द पर्सन इज रीचिंग हायर लेवल्स नाउ व्हाट दिस गाय इज डूइंग हियर इज वर्स नंबर फिफ्टी सेवन मिताहारी इज लाइक eating less food tyagi tyag is sacrifice sacrifice of what sacrifice of what <coughs> sacrifice of desires sacrifice of desires yoga parayan devoted to yoga he becomes siddha that is master in one year but he has added one more word to this Which is not there in the last verse, and what is that word? Brahma Jani. This is where you start thinking. What is this yogic text talking about? See, he has never ever uttered this word Brahma Jani. Celebrity till this point of time. <coughs> he is talking about asanas, mudras, cleansing techniques, all this, and he has not discussed about celibacy yet. And what was the worst last words? Twelve years, if you practice very sincerely. And now he adds one word, celibacy, and he reduces that twelve year period to one year. That's that's the importance of celibacy. In words of Swami Sattma, one year he might just be putting it like twelve year and one year. But the 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 gist of it, the essence of it is, if you are celibate, then it will be a faster achievement. You will be a master soon. You won't have to wait for long. That's how much importance. See, Patanjali, how he started. He said, "Be a celibate." In yamas, the third yama, he said, was celibacy. He has not mentioned yama till this point. He is not talking about yamas, but he has a different way to put it. Because Patanjali was advocating very strict. Yamas and niyamas. Before you start with the serious practice, he is not. So he is accepting everyone. He says, "Okay, you are all welcome. You are a family person. Okay, you have uh, got like uh, your family life, your obligations, your commitments, or someone who doesn't want to live with commitments. He just likes, or she just likes to be." Enjoying her material life. Okay, well, fine. Come, practice hatha yoga. You will be able to do it in twelve years. But if you are a celibate, the time period will drastically reduce to one year. That whole concept of yoga mastery is you are in the state of joy and happiness and bliss. So you should you start. You won't want to go back. In other words, see, I'll tell you one simple thing. When you are you are introduced. Say a single toy when you were very young. You love that toy. You are very attached to that toy. But then, when you are introduced to like better pleasures and excitement in the in the life, you are no more attached to that toy. You understand? So it's like a maturity thing. It's like it's like why are you practicing yoga? Because you want that joy. Happiness, bliss, but without any material attachment. So without, without chocolate, without any desire, you are happy. It doesn't matter whether you get anything or you don't get anything. You are always in that state of master. That is what we are aiming at. So don't look at yoga as a different way of achieve, different level of achievement, and material life as a different level of achievement. Why do you want to live material life? Because you want to be happy. You are seeking a pleasure in chocolate. You are seeking a pleasure in relationship. You are seeking a pleasure in your money. You are seeking a pleasure in your car. That mind that seeks the pleasure, the mind that experiences the pleasure, is the same mind that you are working in yoga. And that mind, when you are living in a material life, it's like kindergarten. And then you become PhD. Then you are no more interested. In those little toys around you, you will be in the life, and the person that you live with, if he or she, if they are also of the same level, you both or you all, 
can enjoy life without attachment to that desire as well. That's the point. But he is drastically reducing the time. So he has a different way of putting things to people eh? as opposed to Buddha and Patanjali. That's the reason why people are attracted to yoga because Hatha Yoga especially doesn't put any ethics and morality to start with. If tomorrow Saddam Hussein comes or Hitler comes to yoga class, <laughs> no one will say no to him. So no problem. No, no. as, as a matter of fact, just to tell you, Saddam Hussein welcomed Swami Satyananda in his palace. The, the tyrant in Iraq. Swami Satyananda stayed in his place for 10 days. He gifted Swami Satyananda the costliest of the things. And one of the Saddam Hussein's son, his, his name is given by Swami Satyananda. And his name is Uday, the one that was killed. But name is given, I don't know if it is corrupt or not, but the name is given by Swami Satyananda, Uday. He died. They killed him in the war. Whatever it is, Swami Satyananda was highest respected by Saddam Hussein. <laughs> Very interesting thing. And he taught him a lot of techniques. No problem. Poema is something interesting. Now he is coming to what you should eat. <laughs> which is good for you if you are practicing Hatha Yoga. And you, he is going to make you happy. Because he says Madhura, Susnigdha and Madhura. Madhura is sweet. So you should eat sweet. If you are practicing Hatha Yoga, you have to eat sweet. Susnigdha is uh, ghee. Snigdha is a little moist, milk, ghee, or a little bit of olive oil, but he didn't know olive oil. It's just that I am adding it. It's not a good addition, but I'm just connecting you to that uh, fatty aspect that he is slightly recommending. Aharascha Chaturthamsha Vivarjitaha. Gunjade, it's not Gunjade, it's actually Gunjade, Shiva Samkritke, Nita Hara Samuchade. Now, what he's saying is this sweet and little bit like with ghee, the food that you eat, eat, one fourth you have to leave it open. Shiva Samkritke, for Shiva, you are eating it. One fourth empty. Actually, it uh, it is in line with the Ayurveda principle. That Ayurveda says that you have to eat half solid, one fourth liquid. But then one fourth liquid and half solid. See, food make four parts: one, two, three, four. Twenty-five percent, twenty-five percent, twenty-five percent, twenty-five percent. So the first fifty percent. Fill it up with solid, solid. Then 25% liquid. And then the remaining 25%, what he saying is leave it empty. Free for air to mix. That's what Ayurveda says. This is exactly what Ayurveda says. I didn't think of there's no difference in it. But he adds one, one interesting thing. That is very, very important for you to note. He says, Shiva Sampariti. For Shiva, you are eating it. For Shiva, what it means? It means don't eat for your taste and your desires, your likes and dislikes. Don't eat following your likes and dislikes. Eat for Shiva. What is Shiva? Shiva is a consciousness in you. Shiva is a state that you would like to achieve. The state of balance means you eat to keep your body fit and strong and healthy, not for your tongue, not for your likes and dislikes and ego and desires. Simple. Eat for Shiva means eat for healthy body. Eat not for your tongue and desires. Now the next verse, 59. He says, Avoid excessive katu, bitter, 
humble, spicy, or acidic. What is what is bitter? We all know. He says avoid extreme. Now amla and tikshna. Tikshna is hot. Tikshna and ushna very sharp and. Ushna is no ushna is heating. Ushna heating. Heating. The food that increases the heat. Non-vegetarian food increases the heat. Or lot of lot of uh, chili. Thai food. Very very ushna. <laughs> My dear Lord, eat. I've been to your country so many times. More than six times, five times now. They are not eat. <laughs> now, interestingly, he says that avoid green. Harita, harita is green, and shaka is vegetables. Now, this is a little tricky. It's contradictory to many of the Ayurveda things also. But I'll leave it to it because it's his uh, perception. And then. Uh, of course, it depends on the constitution, what part of world you are living, uh, what is the season there. So it's a little, little tricky, but still there's many things that you can understand. He's talking about all these things that we need to avoid. Don't go too much into it. Yes? Berries. No, no, berries, he means different types. See, don't, don't go with the berries that you get in your country. Because we don't know what kind of berries were there at that time. Some of it we know. And they might have some poison. Some of them were poison. Some berries are poisonous. Yeah, and some of them here can have actually uh, some kind of bugs in it. So probably that's another reason that green leafy vegetables, if you eat in the rainy season, it can cause, uh, it has a strong lysergic action. The one that we get here, we don't get what you get out in your country. So it's a little tricky, but first I will tell you what is important. It's uh, spicy, chili, too much salty, uh, and too much sour is not good. This type of food creates rajas, uh, increases uh, rajoguna, and rajasaguna, the rajoguna, increases desires. Yes. He is talking about celibacy. So he doesn't want any food that, that destroys the celibacy. If you eat garlic and onion, it will disturb your mind even in the green states. It will create desires. Definitely. So if you look at it from a distance, this food that he is recommending is tamas, tamasic, the one that increases laziness, lethargy, sleepiness, increase. And the food that increases desires, he is trying to avoid that. So he is trying to recommend Sattva Guni. Now he is coming here. He is saying that the food is the food that is preserved or the food that you eat after three hours of cooking. The moment you put the fire to the food for the first time, you have to consume that food in three hours. After three hours, the prana goes down in that food. And then it takes much more time for your body to digest. Let me give you one example. Have you ever tried to eat fresh chapati right from the pan? You naturally eat one or two more and you don't eat food. But if that chapati is kept there for over three hours, then you don't like to eat a lot of them. And if you eat this preserved food, then you need to sleep longer. You are more lazy. In the ashram, you are getting up at 5 o'clock. You are working till 10, 30, 11. And you are used to have energy. The secret is because you consume fresh food, which has very high level of prana. The longer it stays, unfortunately, the lifestyle that we live in cities, the food is all in refrigerator. So you go there and uh, purchase it for like 10 days, put it in the refrigerator, heat it again, again put it back, heat it again, put it back. He's saying avoid that. Now the next verse 61 is a little 
controversial one. He feels one knee is fire. Sitting next to the fire means lighting the fire pit and meditating. Three is woman. Pati seva. Long journeys. Traveling to India or <laughs> should be avoided. But he says in the beginning of the yoga practices. So once you get used to the yoga practices, then it's all right. <laughs> in the beginning, you should avoid it. And he says, now see, when he takes the name of like woman and uh, austerities and family. He knows that people will question him, how come you are talking about it? Then he immediately brings in his master, Gorakshana. And he says, this is what Gorakshana has also said. <laughs> and you want to ask me, how come you say that? He knows that. So he immediately brings in Gorakshana. He says, it's not me, it's Gorakshana who has also said the same thing. See, Tathahi Goraksha Vachana. Tathahi Goraksha Vachana. Not translated it, but anyway, he is just repeating it again. And he even goes to an extent where he says, Prataha Snanopa Upovasa Vi Kaya Klesha Vidhi. Avoid that. Prata Snana, getting earlier, earlier at 4 o'clock in the, like waking up at 4 and having a cold shower or doing some other austerities or fasting. He says, avoid it. <coughs> Kaya Klesha. Kaya is body. And Klesha is, what is Klesha? Pain. Okay. Have you, have you learned Klesha in Yoga Sutras? Rutaya, Panchataya, Krishtaha, Krishtaha. Klesha, Pancha Klesha. Five Klesha. You are not, you are not come across five Kleshas yet? He says, any technique that you trouble your body with should be avoided. What, what did Buddha say? He said middle part. You remember? You remember what Buddha said? Take not too much difficult and not too much easy. Middle part. This is what he says. This is exactly what he means. This is not concerning the energy of you. Sometimes too much austerities can actually create more stress in you. And that can actually harm you negatively. That can actually harm you. So he says, avoid those extremes. Take it easy. Take it easy, man. Don't worry. <laughs> Be cool. That's what basically he says. <laughs> so so fast, fasting in this case is... He's considered extreme. Is extreme. Any kind of fasting. He says that. Yeah. Not fasting. He says that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So he's an advocate of a middle path. You can see it clearly from here. And with this also, the fire, the women, the traveling, he doesn't tell you that you should do it for 12 years. He just says, in the beginning, till you settle down. So he, 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 he keeps his door wide open. He doesn't want, to, he doesn't want people to think that he's too strong and too strict, that they can't leave their family life and they can't go here and there. So this is where he says a person who is doing business, a person who is a family man, they can still come and do my type of yoga. This is basically he is expanding his audience, market. He is expanding his market. People in the ancient times, when they used to think of yoga, they used to light a fire like we do in Havan, and they used to chant mantras all through the day there. A lot of fire ceremonies. That was a way to uh, increase your pranic energy and uh, make your mind concentrate, focus. But you have to avoid. He said avoid. Why? 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 Because, why? because that creates uh, it. It takes too much of your resources to actually do that. But he means that just for the beginners, or even when you go on with your practice. He says for beginners. Okay. But then when you when you cross that beginner phase, you are not that attached. That's the fun. Uh, Hatha Yoga tradition, that time, though he opened it for men and women, very few women used to come. Because the path was really difficult 
like weird asanas and prayer, holding the breath, you need to leave the family life and be in a good man. There is one interesting thing. When he says three, he is actually talking about sexual <coughs> relations. He is not talking about just a woman. He is talking about relations. And that sexual desire starts in the mind. And that that will dissipate the mind. That will dissipate the mental energy. If you go into sexual act, a sexual intercourse, after the sexual intercourse, the pranic energy levels are very low. It's medically proven also that your nervous system undergoes a very powerful depression. After the sexual intercourse, your nervous system undergoes a depression. What causes that depression is still an unknown mystery. Why there has to be a depression? But it undergoes extreme depression. Is it a depression or just, like in my experience, it's usually just a relaxation after? See, along with the depression, there are certain hormones which are injected, the neurotransmitters which are secreted, oxytocin and many other neurotransmitters secreted. That chemistry of all those neurotransmitters make you feel good, happy. But your nervous system is in depression. That is one of the major reasons why for the Olympic athletes or for those who are competitive sportsmen, they are not allowed to have uh, their partners with them. If you travel a long distance, it will, it will completely change the environment, it will completely change the food, it will completely change the time level and all that will reduce your prana. This is exactly what he is talking about as reducing of prana. If you sit next to the fire for long duration, you will lose your prana. I have, I have done this in Yagya period, sat next to the fire for hours and I can tell you in the, at the end of the day, it feels like horrible. Not a very pleasant thing. Very strong. Many times it's recommended for a person who has a very ethical mind or the mind is having too many thoughts and disturbing you. It's recommended to look at the fire and chant mantras. You can light, you can light small fire. Look at it, start chanting mantra. Your mind will come back in a state of concentration fast. But if you sit there for long, it's going to exhaust you. He is talking about good, good food. He is talking about whole wheat. He is talking about milk, ghee, honey, dry ginger. He is talking about. Now he is talking about leafy vegetables again. So, so you actually need to go back to his time. What vegetables he prefers and what vegetables he doesn't prefer. Then you will be clear with this. But this verse is a very clear indication of what he, what he means by um, healthy food. Whole grains first. D. Now you can see, whole grains is healthy carbohydrates. D is a little bit of fats. Of course, how much D you need to eat? The recommendation here is one spoon of D in one day. One, if you are eating lunch, one spoon of D. Not like five, ten spoons of D. No. A drink from a, a bowl. No. One spoon of ghee. Carbohydrates, two, three chapatis or about this much rice. Again, this much of vegetables. And again, this much of uh, beans, sprouted beans. This is what he is basically saying. This is a good diet for Yamindra, Yama Indra. Patyam. Patyam is like a good diet, it's a royal diet for that person who wants to walk on the path of yoga. We can make it. You can make it by yourself. How do you make it? As it's actually milk cream. The, the milk that you churn, you take the cream. Okay. And then the cream you boil. You can make it at home. Mirabai, the kitchen ladies, they make it here. You can see it actually. They boil the milk, the cream comes, they take off the cream. Again, in the evening, they boil the same milk. Again, a little bit of cream comes. Again, they take it out. So All that cream. So the fat take it off. Correct. And that fire fat, then they boil. It becomes ghee. But this is a cool method of making ghee. The traditional method of making ghee is a little different. What they do is the milk, they put yogurt in it, small yogurt. So the whole milk becomes yogurt the next day. Now in that yogurt, they put 
water and churn it or you can put it in the uh, blender yeah blender sorry really bad okay. blender and then the fats come up the fats start floating take off those fats boil them and that is pure ghee that is the best yeah. uh, ayurveda respects ghee 100 times more than oil there was one particular research which did not carry on a lot but Paresh was talking about it and he said that uh, the myelin sheath of the nervous cells the neurons that we have they have an exon terminal from the nucleus of the neuron there comes there extends a terminal and that terminal is exon terminal and that exon terminal has a covering and that covering is called Myelin. It's made up of myelin. And if that myelin is disintegrating, the disease that you have is MS, multiple sclerosis, which is incurable. Say ghee could increase the regeneration of that myelin sheet. But then it was not carried out fully. Partially it was some some it was there somewhere, but then it never came out. The thing is, though in saturated fats, definitely all yogic texts have upheld the key with the highest respect. And in Ayurveda they say, if you want to be intelligent, to your brain, the tonic is ghee. See, all these uh, diets, only protein diet, then Atkinson's diet, then this uh, only raw diet. They have all failed. I can tell you that all of them have some or other kind of negative effects. What is important is a balanced diet. There was one more research by WHO. It said about 8 to 10 percent fats, 20 to 25 percent proteins, and about 50 percent carbohydrates. One time research. Now again, people said no, no more protein. Then they added only protein. Then they started realizing that it's damaging their kidneys, it's damaging their liver. So what is needed is a balanced diet. It's like like you don't want to have the overconsumption, but we need we need we need fats, you know, and also the bad fats. Not not too much, but we need. Yes, absolutely. To a certain extent you need it. And ghee has many more things to have. In when you start serious practice of pranayama, the heat inside your body will increase. The what? Heat, heat. The nervous system will have a stimulation in some or other way. It will either result in a, in a strong uh, physical effects on you or a strong mental effects on you. They might be positive, might be negative. Now to control that, he says you must consume ghee and milk. And I tell you my experience. If you take ghee, one two spoons, one two spoons, it eases out. If not. Too much heat can even improve bleeding after pranayam practice. Some people have nightmares, some people have too much stimulation that they don't sleep. Sometimes people just have too much energy, they don't know what to do with it. I'm coming to the effects of pranayam. That cannot be resolved with any other thing. But ghee and milk can actually help. <laughs> The reflection of the way is the reflection of our mind. Whatever I have, I am never happy with that. I always see that I should have something different than what I have. That's a reflection of my mind. I am not happy with what I have. The person who is skinny always thinks I need to put on a couple of kgs. So always this thing, you can also think. When you stand on the weight balance, you think either you should gain or you should lose. Uh, can we replace ghee with uh, olive oil? He said, go to India, purchase ghee and then do master care. No replacement to, to ghee with anything else. I think we will stick to that. We are happy to provide ghee is a very costly food to purchase in India. But we are ready to spend that money for you guys because we love you. <laughs> and I will make you eat. And I challenge you that with the lifestyle that you live here in the ashram, in the mountains that 
we are saying the asanas that you are doing, the pranayam that you are doing will reduce your cholesterol levels, will reduce your weight, will make you feel fresh, your brain will be much more active. But if you live a sedentary life where the daily fat consumption is really, really huge, you are stressed all the time, then a little bit of heat can also disappear. I will finish this last verse and then stop. This is a very important verse for us to understand. You are Luddhati Buddha. You remember this all the time. This will help you understand who can practice Hatha Yoga, who can practice this yoga. You are Ruddhati Buddha. You are Ruddha, Ati Ruddha, Vyadita, Durvada. Five categories here in Buddha. You are young people. Young. What is the definition of young? Youth, 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 teenagers, 13, 14, 15 years onwards. Vruddha. 63 or 64? 64. So 63 was about the ghee. Yeah. I lost one, I don't know why. Again about the ghee. See, three or four verses you talk about ghee and milk. That's why I am worse to sing it. Swami Satyananda is worse to sing it. And that's valid here in India because the cow is treated properly. But in my country, I can't accept this uh, view because yeah. there's a completely different idea yeah. that's, that's happening in India. I agree with you. Those cows, they are standing there. Oh, it's the worst. They're just the machines. machines. Yeah. These cows there in your country can actually have heart disease and diabetes. Yeah. Right now, also go out and check. We have one cow. Her name is Gauri. Gauri is the wife of Shiva, the Shakti, the Prana Shakti, the pra energy. She is like the queen. Yeah, and she that... won't let you come close. She will eat any grass that she wants. She destroys many trees sometimes. And that's okay. It's her trees. What can you do about it? And she is so strong and so healthy. Very powerful. All the cows in this village, every day in the morning, they take them to eat the grass. They take them to eat the grass all over the fields. The, the calf is also with them. So the calf drinks the milk that it wants. Yeah, that, the cow feeds that's, that's very good. That, that sheep wants to feed. They are not fat. They are strong cows. They have little bit of a skinny side which is good for them to climb the hills. If they are fat cows, then they can't really climb the hills and eat the grass. So, when you take a milk from that cow, it's never going to make you. It's always going to make you feel good when you live in this area. They are very interesting things. And I tell you, Swami Satyananda said there are two animals that can actually take care of the negative energy from you. One is a dog and the second is a cow. The dog can feel it. Dog doesn't take it out. Dog can feel it. So anyone, if you have your dog, and then if your enemy or someone who doesn't like you, if he comes to your house, the dog will keep barking at it. Yeah. To an extent where it won't let you do anything. You see, no? the dogs feel it. But the cow can actually take it out. There's another one. The cat. You know, cat. The, the cats walking around the fields where I live. We used to say that they're working about the feast to take out the bad energy from you. And so the witches, you know, the witches, they had many cats because they were dealing a lot of these strong energies. Yeah. So all these cats were walking on around them just to take the bad energy out from them. Actually, someone but told me that cats, cats also feel it, but they like negative energy. So they, yeah, they, they are negative energy. They, they, they like it, but they take it. They take it from you. Okay. you know? so they, clean, they, they clean you off of bad energy. This is what I would always call it. Not really that. Like the cow. <laughs> but they say the cow has most compassionate energy. Dog is not compassionate, you can see. Dog is not compassionate animal as such. It's loving animal to the master. But cow can be compassionate for anyone. It can be accepting to anyone. That's why I'm eating a hamburger, I eat ice cream more compassionate. Hamburger. Actually, actually, no, 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 no. I, I'll, I'll, I'll answer you. I'll answer you. When the cow is a grill, 
Her emotions are killed. Emotion are. When the cow is killed, the her compassion is compassion is killed. Is killed. So when you eat hamburger, you feel more angry and more aggressive because compassion is killed. Youth, people who are thirty, forty years onwards, then he skips adults, sir, the normal adults, and he goes to old people. Because of course, if youth and old people can do, even if a strong person can do it, old people, Buddha, Ati Buddha, very old, Yadita, diseased, a person who is suffering from disease, Durbala, weak, depressed, like mentally, physically low person, Abhyasa, Siddhim, Amruti, if they practice. Siddhim perfection, apnoti get. They can get perfection by regular study, regular practice. Sarva Yogeshwar Tandritaha. All aspects of yoga. And we are only practicing asanas. You see, it's a big, big issue. We are only practicing asanas. This is all aspects of yoga if you practice, including food. He's talked about food. He's talked about celibacy. He's talked about eating less food. He's talked about guidelines. He's given you guidelines. If you do all this, Guru Upadisha Mahayana, if you follow the instructions of your Guru, if you are devoted, if you have the courage, if you don't talk to common people, if you are very focused, all these things, if you bring, then even a person who is sick and diseased and weak and very old can also achieve perfection in yoga. This is a very important verse. But he has skipped kids below the age of 12, 13. He has not mentioned that. This has to be remembered. And now because the market for yoga for kids is really big, everyone wants to do teacher training for yoga, for kids, yoga teacher training, kids. Because it's a big market, but he, he does not recommend that. He doesn't think that will be good. Huh, because asanas, pranayam, mudras and bandhas for an under, undeveloped body and mind is not very good. Because what it means? When you teach it to kids, you don't use the same pranayama as asanas as we do. Correct. That's a way out. But he is talking about serious yoga. He is not talking about just few exercises and just few breathing techniques. He is not talking about He is talking about serious techniques. Then you can understand that. But you cannot be serious practices to the kids. That's all it means. I think I should stop. Okay. So, you will, you will see the cobra? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go then.